Hello, welcome to Lost and Found No More Secrets. My name is Heidi Billingsley Kuiper, and I am the host of the show. I am a genetic genealogist with DNA Angels. DNA Angels is a dedicated nonprofit organization helping people to discover their biological truth. Whether they are adopted, an NPE, meaning not parent expected, donor conceived, or they just never knew who their biological parent is, we're there to help. Join us on today's episode as we explore the powerful journey of one of our very own clients, following their path from feeling lost to finally being found. Discover how they reclaim their sense of identity, proving that one sense of identity is more important than someone else's secrets. Hello and welcome back to Lost and Found No More Secrets. My name is Heidi and I am the team lead genetic genealogist with DNA Angels. I'm also your host of the show and I'm joined today by my co-host Laura Schultz, who is also a genetic genealogist with the organization. How are you doing, Laura? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. So today's guest, we have we have several different categories of clients. And those categories are NPE, not parent expected, donor conceived, adopted, or they just never knew who their biological parent was. And our guest Karen today falls into the, she just didn't never, she never knew. She had a name and she had a little bit of tidbit of information, but uh, she just never knew who her biological father was. She came to us in 2022. Initially she worked with Renee, and uh, Renee uh, is no longer volunteering with us. And when she left, Kim picked up on her case and Kim was able to bring home, bring it home for Karen. Would you like to go ahead and bring Karen up to the show and get to meet her? Hi, Karen. Hi, Hi Karen. Hello. Hi. Hi, 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 Laura. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me today, too. Thank you for being a guest on our show. I, we know it's it's a very personal journey with lot, filled with lots of raw emotions. So we really appreciate you agreeing to do this. Well, I always like Thank to start you. at the beginning. Can you tell me a little bit about your family structure and what it was like growing up for you? So I was raised by a single parent, a mom. Um, my entire life. I never thought about looking for my biological father um, because my entire life I was told my biological father was deceased. I had an entire story about how he was killed in Vietnam. Um, I was told that he was an only child and that his mother and father also were only children. So I had no reason <laughs> to look for anybody um mm -hmm. yeah so um it being growing up it was kind of weird because a lot of people claimed that they knew my father but no one actually knew him which was weird people would say things like oh your father's hispanic they would speak about his ethnicity and i never seen the fit in um as far as not Coming up, you know, you have sometimes kids have these father daughter things. I never had a father mm -hmm. really never bothered me. It just the older I got, it started to bother me more. Did you have a father figure in your life, like a grandfather or an uncle or any kind of male role model to look up to? Well, I had uncles. I, I now I say one of my uncles, I tell him, I say, you know, you were my first father. So he was my father figure. I don't know how great a father figure he was, <laughs> but he was a great father figure. I did have a godfather um, that was in my life. He recently passed uh, in 2021. He was, when he was there, he was great. Um, so I did have uncles, male cousins, but no one really consistent there as a father. Do you have uh, children of your own? I do. I have one daughter. And the thing is, growing up not knowing my father or knowing who he is, I made sure because I was a single mother as well. I made sure that she always knew who her father was. 
She's in touch with her father's family, her siblings. So I made it um, a personal goal of mine to make sure not only did she know her bio uh, paternal family, that she would be involved. So she has a great relationship with her father's family. I have a great relationship with them as well. That's oh, awesome. That's great. Yeah. Did you have any siblings growing up? I am an only child mm -hmm. uh, that my mom had. I'm the only bio child. However, my mom always had a bunch of children in her home. So there's a lot of children that call her mom. And the thing is, I come from a family of strangely enough, because people speak of generational curses, what have you. I come from a family of NPEs. So my mom also doesn't know who her bio father is. So I've been helping her because of what I've learned so far. Um, so yeah, um, because of the story about my fa bio father, the story changed often. I, I thought I was the only one, but meeting other people in my position found out, oh, at this age, maybe from zero to 10, the story is one thing. From 10 to 20, the story changes. From 20 on up, the story changes. And then when you start to search, the story changes. So there are also, God, I don't want to disparage my mother or anything, but there are men um, that apparently knew her. And they would tell me that they were my bio father. My mom was always <laughs> no way. So at any and it's at any given time in my city, there are a, a ton of um, grown ups a little younger than me that believe wholeheartedly that I'm their biological sister. I don't know how they could figure that, but okay, I just take it. I just take it. <laughs> They wanted you to be their sister, right? <laughs> You're just I suppose. <laughs> I, I suppose. I and I don't I don't you know, I haven't I don't tell me different. I don't know these people though. So oh, I've just I've met people when I was younger, they're adults. If they run across me in life in our city, hey, this is my sister, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know them, but I okay. I'm but your mother did from... provide your mother did provide a name, and the name stayed consistent. The story My changed mother... a little bit, but the the name stayed consistent. I found that interesting when I read your room today, and she had a little backstory about I, some. What was it about playing pool? Like where he hung out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me so, more about uh, that. yeah. So she gave me the name. Name stayed. These are the th three things that stayed consistent throughout my life. His name, um, the fact that he played pool, mm -hmm. and when he, which is strange now, where he played pool, and uh, that he went to the military. Three right. consistencies, right? Now, the story was he died in the military or whatever. Of course, that changed. But finally, toward the end, um, the name. Even she finally, she was like, I just made all that up. I made the name up. No, ma'am, it's too late. She told me all that when I told her I was searching. It's too late. I had already found the man and verified the three things that she told me. <laughs> so, no, ma'am, you didn't make him up. He's not an imaginary person. Right. So, so, so what led for you to finally take a DNA test and, and really search for your answers? What, what, what happened in your life to make you do that? Was there nothing, some kind of nothing, moment nothing. that you were just like, I need to know? No, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know what I, you know, at least maybe I could find an obituary or something. Uh, you know, and what's weird is I don't think that I was even looking for like aunts, uncles or anything. I just wanted to know. I just had a feeling that, you know what, that man's out there. I think mm -hmm. it was more of a feeling. Uh, my best friend took... <laughs> So we had this, my best friend and I had this kind of argument, debate, saying that she's Native American. And I said, no. I said, actually, studies found that people are constantly saying they're Native American and they have no Native American ancestry. That's true. That's true. So she decided to take the ancestry test to prove me wrong. Of course, I was right. <laughs> but in taking her ancestry test, 
she found her biological father, who she wow. never wanted to find, and siblings. And she was, I was so excited for her, and she felt so bad because she knew this is something that I had been wanting to do. I just started the search officially um, went in 2022, but up to then, I had started really wanting to search. So she felt bad because she found her biological father and nothing was coming up for me. So I had to tell her, like, I lived vicariously through her. I'm like, girl, set up that meet and greet. Meet that man. Meet your sibling. <laughs> so I was so excited. Like, I needed to know every detail of, you know, how it went with her and everything. And she was afraid to tell me. And I'm like, at that point, I was at peace and I was excited for her because I figured nothing would ever happen for me. A so you, later, here we are. So you took a DNA test, you get back the results, and you think what? <sighs> I'm never going to find these people because on Ancestry, here's the thing. I found like second cousins and... I didn't realize with Ancestry, they'll show like an estimate and then you can click on it and show, you know, 90% this is possible what it is. Mm -hmm. So when I went on Ancestry, I didn't think I had anybody close. And uh, when I did Ancestry, they weren't separating paternal and maternal. So yeah, I that's was like, feature. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh. and your mother didn't know who her father was, which made it even more difficult. Yeah. So um, what I did do, though, I knew some of the people that tested on my maternal side because I have a relationship with them. So I was able before I uh, checked in with DNA and angels, I was able to go through there and kind of see who they match to kind of tell mm -hmm. um, what side I did. Funny enough, speak to a lot of my paternal relatives on the phone with all of us trying to figure out how we knew each other. But I didn't have a father to test. So I was like, oh, this is uh, this is never going to happen. So you're overwhelmed and you don't know what to do. Yeah. How did you find Dina Angels? Facebook. I said, you know what? <laughs> There's a group for everything. There is. So there is, there is. I did. I did a Facebook. Uh, I don't know who my father is. <laughs> I'll try to find my bio father. Somehow came up to one of the DNA angels Facebook group, and I start reading everybody's story. And for the first time, I didn't feel like it was only me. I you thought felt, my you felt your tribe. Yeah, I found. I thought my story like was so ridiculous and I'm like God I was ashamed as a child you know I used to make up stuff um but I was really ashamed and man I found the DNA Angels uh page and I was like oh, I'm not the only one yeah. and everybody's mother is saying the same exact thing <laughs> so yeah and then I found out that you could get an angel uh I, I was like, okay, if you could tell me anything, so yeah. So you uh, you apply, and we uh, accept you into our family because that's what we are. We're a family, yeah, yeah. and you get assigned Renee to your case. Tell me yeah. what that was like whenever you first get assigned an angel, and you realize, okay, I can put this in somebody else's hands. It has to be, you know, reassuring to you that you can just kind of step away for a minute and know that your case is in yeah. good hands. Tell me about that. Yeah. I was excited. Um, I didn't quite believe. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was getting into. But I was excited. I'm like, okay, so she kind of knows what she's doing. So maybe I just sit back. I thought it was going to happen quicker, too. <laughs> I thought she had a magic wand that everything was going to come together. But it was a fun journey. It was a really fun journey. I learned a lot on the journey. Anytime I had a question, I had a lot of Renee was there helping me. I was trying to figure it out on my own. Renee was still there guiding me. Well, I um, noticed one thing when I was reading your room, Karen. You have a, an ability that a lot of clients don't. And this is something that as a search angel, we love. You are not afraid to reach out. 
Uh, sure you're like, not. tell me what to say. I'll reach out to this match, this, and you did. And <laughs> that is, uh, you know, it's, it's can be so scary for a lot of people and they won't do it, but you did an amazing job of, of Thank reaching you. out to your, you, you would find them yourself on Facebook. I saw that. I, like, sure did. I, sure did. I sent her a message and you did really good because a lot of uh, your DNA matches were also, or were NPEs. They didn't know who their father was. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It was, it took a long time to put those connections together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing was Renee, what two connections that I didn't realize were really actually close. Um, like I said, on other websites, I had two cousins. Uh, they were like showing second cousins uh, for me. So I'm thought I'm thinking, uh, cause I know who my second cousins are, but again, I didn't realize second cousin could be either your second cousin or your half first cousin. Yeah, there's different and, relationships. But they yeah. just do a prediction, and usually that prediction is not correct. Yeah. So when uh, these two cousins. Um, when I found them, I'm like, mm. Renee <laughs> went through and she was finding obituaries. Well, one cousin, I reached out. First of all, a lot of people I reached out to, they were not trying to know about me. They didn't talk to me. So one lady, I thought before um, Renee let me know as my paternal, I thought it was on my maternal side because this cousin looks just like my mother. Her children look like me. She never answered. But then we realized her mother was actually my biological father's half sister. Oh, oh really? So that's a good match. match. Oh Karen, my God, yeah. No, and it's yes. great that you did so much legwork because your case was difficult with the different levels of MPEs and not, mm -hmm. your mom not knowing your mm -hmm. family. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it get we have that small percentage of cases like yours that are difficult. So we could use any help yeah. we can. So it's great with that. Cause you typically our cases um, about 70% are solved within the first week. So that does make it difficult for everyone else. It's like, what about me? You know, but uh, yeah. it's just, yeah. you know how they say when you're selling a house, it just takes that one person, right? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. like, it just takes that one person to do the DNA test and then it it's good. Um, because there's a lot of the times you can't find the records. So, Thanks mm -hmm. for helping out your angel. <laughs> well, here's, you know what? And so you would think that one would put it together. Here is how. Here is this. Now, I have a cousin. I think she's my second cousin once I removed. So this little lady, her mother reached out to me. And she was trying to find her child's father. And then I think this is how I really got to think of it. She's trying to find her child's father. So we had an idea. Well, she had an idea of who her child's father was. Could never put it together. The young lady, she's she shows up. She's now I know who she is um, in my DNA. So, so earlier this year, you know, I have a relationship with a young lady. We talk off and on. Her mother, I'm, the young lady's mother, reached out to me out the clear blue. And she's like, hey, have you ever heard of this last name? She said, because I believe I had, I'm going to call the girl Denise. I believe I found Denise's father. I believe this person is Denise's father. Well, with Denise, again, I'm like, she is a cousin or so. I couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, no, I never heard of that name. Ancestry hadn't given me any like notifications that I have new matches. Well, I went on Ancestry because I had gave up for a couple of months. And this last name, this gentleman's last name was on my ancestry. And I'm like, I've never seen this before. So I asked her, I said, well, who, who are his parents? And she was saying that this person also was an MPE. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, there we go. Well, because I'm nosy, I went, found him on Facebook and I went through his whole friends list and I come through and I don't know why. I came to this last name, my paternal grandmother's last name. And I started going through my friends list. A lot of those people are already on my friends list. Mm. And so one gentleman in particular, I went through his friends list. And lo and behold, I saw the name that I've always seen my whole entire life. And I go to this Facebook page and this man looks like me. 
Now I look just like my mother. So that was strange for me. And I'm like, this has to be him. So I go through his pictures, his friends, list, and then I see a picture of a woman that's almost my identical twin as as a younger version of me. Wait, does this she, same name, is this the same name your mom had told you your whole life? Yeah. Oh yeah. my. So she told uh, wow. She told me. So so I see a girl who looks just like a younger version of me. And she's like, happy birthday, dad. And then, but she's identical twin to my daughter. Ident she's 42, looks just like my daughter. And I was in shock. Well, I reached out to his cousin with the last name. And I said, hey, I told him who I am. And I said, I believe your cousin is my father. <laughs> Can you reach out to him? Because I sent him a message and a Facebook friends request, but he didn't answer me back. So the cousin reaches back out to me. So now he's talking to my bio father. And so we go through, uh, I tell him everything I knew about. I said, hey, I only know three things. And I told him the name, he verified. And then I said, ask him. I said, only other thing my mama told me is he used to play pool. I said, ask him where he played pool at. So he told me and he verified, but it was like a couple of blocks away from where my mama remember, my mother remembered. So he already verified. I knew it was him. But then he said, well, this is his exact words where I, I have to be honest. I don't remember some things from back then. And this is what ticks me off. He doesn't remember some things from back then. And he gave me the dates that he would have had to be with my mom to conceive me. And he left right after that to go to the military. So now when the angel reached out to him, now he wants to deny everything because he, say, he says um, he wasn't in the location where I was conceived. We never spoke about where I was conceived, number one. Number two, you're from my hometown. You absolutely were. Number three, you already verified. You don't know some of, you don't remember what happened then. And number four, DNA doesn't lie. And you have right. DNA to his family. <laughs> he doesn't even want to hear that. He doesn't, yeah. I, he doesn't even want to hear any of that, but okay. So he, I told him, I asked him, would he be willing to take a DNA test if I pay for it? He gusted me. So... <laughs> Then I reach out to this woman who's daggone near my twin. Now, now I'll, I'll admit, maybe I did wrong because I sent her pictures of herself next to my daughter. I don't even think she realized that was my daughter next to her pictures. Right. And I kind of explained to her, you know, that I was looking for help. You know, she's related to me. And then she wasn't she wasn't happy at first. She was like, there is no way you could be my cousin, but not my sister. Girl, look at my we look alike. And I said, no, I, I definitely, first she said, um, good luck finding your family. I said, oh, you're definitely my family. I'm just trying to figure out if you're my cousin or my sister. Right. And she, she was like, I never took uh, DNA. I don't know how ancestry works. So her son was like, well, your aunt's children are my cousins. Here's the last name here. So she didn't want to hear any of it. She started out real harsh. But then she looked through my Facebook page and I knew she was looking for it because she started asking me about people. And uh, she saw my stepfather and she said, well, who is this man? I said, that's my mom's husband of 24 years. I'm 54, so that's not my father. And I told her, you know, you will see my godfather on there as well. And then, you know, later on, she was like, hey, well, if you reach out to anyone else, don't send them this. And she said, my father's old. That's probably why he didn't respond. And I told her, she said, you have to work this out with my dad. And he probably thinks she was trying to scam him. I said, no, I said, your father's already. Because first she said, well, my father wasn't there. I said, your father's already verified that he's the person. He, he already verified the timeline. So you, you don't need to stick up for that. But <sighs> So you're, yeah, you're obviously Facebook friends with this person. That, no, that I'm not. Happen. You're not. Oh, I thought she was going through your page, so I figured. Oh yeah, she. My page is in private. She can look through. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Girl, mine's locked so, down. 
<laughs> that's because uh, 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 that's because people snoop on you right <laughs> yeah well well i say um i need my facebook page public in case any of you want to reach out to me and also sometimes i do teachings on my page so i need for the world to see mm -hmm. gotcha. karen mm -hmm. also um you know don't necessarily give up right now because just think you've had 50 years to no, you didn't know who you're right. doing, right? Yeah. And this is yeah. just coming at them. So, you know, yeah. sometimes it takes yeah. a hot minute for people to get used to it. So it's good that your face looks over because maybe she'll reach out again. So, um, yeah. or, you know, maybe give it some time and then maybe next year reach out again if you, you know, feel. Yeah, what I decided to do is, you know, kind of pull back a little bit. Uh, my angel did reach out to, I have a, <laughs> I have a sister that's like younger than my daughter too. So my angel Kim actually reached out to her, but she didn't respond. Uh, she reached out to my bio father. <laughs> I felt sorry for her. I, I expected the response she got. She was like, this man, he hung up on me. He said, <laughs> he said, he put it. She said, I'm like, sir, I'm, I'm a professional. She said, I want to, I asked him, you know, she said, I reached out to see if, uh, if I could just send him proof. I said, I, I'm not worried about it. Someone else will test or Eventually. and I said my yeah, I said my my baby sister, half sister, I said she's gonna reach out to me because she her mother is only a couple of years older than me, which is gross to me. But she's gonna talk to her mother or she's probably gonna talk to the, the other siblings and they probably say she's lying or whatever. She's going to test just if nothing more than to prove someone's going to test just so they can prove that I'm a liar, which is going to be beautiful. Okay. <laughs> prove it. So right. I figure somebody, somebody's going to test eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at least for your peace of mind, you, you have that answer, right? I mean, you, yeah, I do. you know where you I come do. from, you can see what these people look like. So yeah. I mean, that must be yeah. like, something, you know, like you're no longer like, search in the wild like you you know you're yeah i mean for me i said for me if nothing else came of this that it's more than i ever imagined like i know i know what this man looks like i know what my siblings look like did you show I your have... mom a picture of him what did your mom say <sighs> so remember she made him up right yeah so mm -hmm. i told her that I found him and I, I was in contact with him. She was like, she was saying, he's a lie. Well, where has he been? I said, but you made him up. I, you should have had the same reaction like in Mickey Mouse. I started talking to Mickey Mouse. Why are you? What are you? <laughs> so, so, but to be honest, whatever happened between them, now my mom did. One of the stories my mom did give me, I, I don't know. But whatever happened, I know it's traumatic. It was very, very, very traumatic for her uh, because of, I hear the stories of what happened after she was pregnant with me, after I was conceived. So I try to give her grace too. But honey, she, he told me to send it. Oh, this is why he shuts me down. He told me to send a picture of my mom. He said he don't recognize her. I show her a picture of him. She don't recognize him either. <laughs> Well, it was a I hot feel, minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> what were you? I told him, I said, you know what? I'm not angry at either one of you for not knowing. Y'all was 19 and 18 years old. It was the 60s. I don't, it, it could have been a one night stand. I don't know what y'all were doing, right? None of us I know. Just need to hear that, right? right. Judge. You can't judge when you don't know the circumstances. So. <laughs> Neither one of y'all recognized each other, but I'm like, I have both of your DNA. I don't care. Both of you can try to say, you know, <laughs> what you want. Right. I have your DNA, both of you. So, yeah. right. so hopefully you're going to be able to get a medical history too. you know, find out what your grandparents uh, passed away from and when your bio no, father does maybe, you know, through public, public I, records, because it's important to have an accurate medical history. Well, for me, so and people keep saying that I'm 54 years old, right? I've already had a very rare cancer. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't I don't really need this for what? I don't need his medical history at 54 years old. Because the only thing I would really be concerned about is cancer or Alzheimer's or whatever. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um now I do have 
my grandfather, um, I know what he passed for him. Man, Renee was a beast, honey. Renee was able to help me find who passed from what in my family. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what my great my grandfather passed from because my grandfather's nephew and his name is Terry. Uh, he and I have a relationship, man. He see because my grand this man's uh, name and picture kept popping up in ancestry. Never heard that before, and he helped me realize that. Well, Kim, I think, put it together that that was my grandfather. And so the person my father was adopted by is not him. So that's my grandfather. So I talked to I talked to that family member. He put it together. My father also has a brother, looks identical to him. So the cousin that put it together, when I approached him, I was kind of nervous. And I'm like, have you ever heard of him, you know, dating this woman or having another child other than this child, another son? At first, he was like, whoa, let me check. He talked to his mom, and he asked me, he said, how are you connected? And so I showed him, you know, he and I, how we're connected. I said, okay, I believe um, your uncle's child, not the one that we know of, is my biological father. This man came back. He said, are you speaking of? And said, my biological father's name. Oh, that wow. was a big oh, wow. I was like, <gasps> So that's uh, and he actually knew my bio. Mm -hmm. It like the mm -hmm. whole thing just came full circle, right? So yeah, yeah. Got, it, got it confirmed. Yeah. yeah. Karen, tell and us, I, tell us what what would advice would you give to somebody that finds himself in the same situation? They are yearning to know who their biological father is, even if it's just a picture, a name. They don't know wh who to reach out to, where to go. What advice do you have for them? Don't give up. Keep searching. Man, stay on Ancestry. Look at every hint, every picture, scar the internet, the obituaries, the marriage license. You have a right to know. You know, people make you feel bad. People will be angry with you. You have a right to know. Don't yeah. give up. And don't let anybody's attitude distract you. You know, and if you need to find closure, create a story that doesn't make anyone else a villain. And that just make you a victim and gives you peace and make that your closure. But don't give up. You have a right to know. You're so right. Yeah. Thank you, Karen, so much for agreeing to be on our show today. It's been a Thank pleasure you. having you. It's Thank nice you for having you. me. Goodbye. Yeah. Be yeah. blessed. Bye. Be blessed. Bye. Bye. Wow. So sweet. Yeah. You know, I think it's important for us to be realistic about our show. I feel like so many of our episodes have had these beautiful reunion with these siblings on and biological parents on and as wonderful and as, as warm and fuzzy as it is, it's just not, it's not realistic because not all of our stories end that way. And so I think it's important for us to show, you know, the resilience uh, that people that do not have that great reunion, how they're still able to find their own peace in a different way. Yeah. And she actually, um, for her case being so difficult, taking a long time, she barely mentioned that her biological father was also adopted. So like that adds a whole, she had a whole nother level. So a lot of times we can't solve those cases. So this mm -hmm. was, you know, just one person, It she's lucky and it, you know, they do. <laughs> Eventually some things come out, but I'm, I'm so glad that she found at least what she was looking for, the name. So, right. yeah. well, thank you all for watching the show. Please come back and meet us next Thursday for another thrilling episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and give us a comment. We really like to hear y'all's feedback and we will see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.